Hi everybody. Um, I wanted to make this quick video to show you guys um, a little idea I have, just a 3D model. Um, when I was in the UK, I used to make use of these air dusters. I used to buy one from Amblin. You can get them in various different places. Um, it's effectively a um, compressed air or whatever the mechanism in, is inside um, that you that has a little um, aerosol spray. Um, that you can use to dust stuff. Effectively, you spray stuff, and out comes air, high pressure air, and you can dust your PC or whatever else with it. Um, back in South Africa, I haven't actually looked for these, but I'm fairly sure you'd be able to buy them here as well. Um, but I got bored one day and I actually decided to make a little design of my own. Um, and I thought. Um, of this little idea, so let me render that, right, so that you can see it. Effectively, the idea is to use a standard um, Schrader valve. These are the valves that um, you use to fill up your car tires um, when you get to the, to the petrol station. So let me get rid of the outer um, bit. The, the outer rim of the, the valve, and there you can put the valve on top anyway. And there is what it looks like. So, this little cavity here is supposed to actually depress the pin when you push it in. There's some space for the valve body to, to go into, and then just surround the surrounding bit, and that all comes out into the nozzle with a narrowing in the middle so you can attach a um, spray pipe or um, thing in there to, to direct the, the air in the direction you want to go. Um, so I printed that um, and it worked out quite well. I had to do two prints. Um, the first print I made uh, five millimeters um, in diameter um, after measuring a, a shredded valve with a, with a standard um, ruler. Um, that ended up being about a half a millimeter too small and I reprinted it um, to be six millimeters in diameter and that seemed that actually fit perfectly. The only additional step I went through was to um, vapor smooth the print um, which I'll, I'll talk you through in a bit more detail shortly. So after after printing um, the valve top I decided to go to a local um, car part shop and picked up a valve, um, standard valve, 15 rand in South Africa is about equal to $1.30. Um, and yeah, I'm packing that. That's a, that's a slightly bigger view, more closer view of what it looks like. This bottom part is inside the rim, inside the wheel of your tire. Um, they come with their own little lids and the seat. Um, in this shot, you can actually see the valve top that I printed um, and where it'll fit onto. There it is, um, actually on the valve. Okay, so here we are, are printing the valves. You'll see the one on the right didn't quite work out that nicely. It's a fiddle with it quite a bit, and it still didn't come out nice. Um, but it's printing quite well. The one on the on the left is it came out quite nicely, and that's the one I eventually vapor smoothed and um, used later on to to print with. Um, this is this video is playing at um, eight times the normal um, speed of printing. There you can see the front of the nozzle just getting built. In this specific um, print. Um, the little hole that goes through to the inside is actually sealed off. I had to, to drill that open again. Um, in the model that I have or will upload to Thingiverse, um, that has actually been fixed. The other, the other um, anomaly I fixed with this one was the, the top layer is um, only a millimeter thick and that turned out to be a little too thin in very initial tests. I actually blew the top off this um, this little valve top um, in the final version that is now up to I think four millimeters thick just to give it a decent seat, a decent stop um, and that 
that seems to work quite well. Um, there you can just see the little um, legs starting to be printed now um, that form a cross in the middle, so there's a little dome being printed now. Um, it's printing quite nicely. Um, in a couple of layers time you'll see that I start closing off the nozzle at the front. Um, the cross is almost touching now. Um, or it might just look like that from this angle. Yeah, I should really clean my um, heat bed. I seem to rip the previous print off and just start printing again. Um, there you can see that it's, it's now starting to close off the dome. Um, and then there's a quite a few layers of simply um, building up that structure. Going back down to eight times. Um, here you can see the little pin being um, printed now. That actually presses the, um, the the corresponding pin in the in the Schrader valves. There was a slight bit of a deviation on one of my deltas um, uprights, which I've also fixed since this print, and it's um, it's printing quite well now. Um, but yeah, that's all quite nicely done now. At this stage, the only bit that's left is just to print, print the rest of the, um, of the shaft, um, or, or the sleeve at least. And um, this is the bit that fits over the, the thread of the shredder valve and seats um, as perfectly as possible onto the rubber end of the shredder valve. Um, in the print I did, I, I didn't really measure the height or anything. I picked a, a random height of 20 millimeters for the entire valve, um, and it turned out to be to be exactly right, um, as you'll see later during the test. Um, pressing the valve in um, just expert, well, just opens the valve big enough, um, and then seats perfectly onto the rubber um, end of the of the Schrader valve, where it then um, it makes quite a nice seal. Okay, so here's the result of my 3D print. Um, as you can see, that came out quite, quite nice. You can see the structure inside. Yeah, comes out into a nice little, roughly one and a half millimeter hole. I'm thinking I might still have to refine the thickness of the inner and the outer rim to take like a standard um, little pipe that you get with these air dusters. Um, but for now, this being a test unit, that kind of works well. Here's the Schrader valve I showed you earlier. So if we take the cap off of that one, that's what that looks like. There you can see the little pin. You can see the little pin on the inside. Um, 
which if you press it in on a normal car tire actually lets the air come out. Um, here's a couple of the, couple of the others. Um, these are the two smaller ones. The first ones are printed um, and they, they're actually just too, too tight. The valve doesn't actually go in there nicely. Um, here's the one you saw that was being printed with the other one. Um, so this one fits, but it's, it's really an ugly print. It's sort of a, I'll probably just throw this one in the bin. Um, this one, however, as you can see there, um, slip, slips on quite nicely. And, um, and you've got quite a nice action where if you press it in, it goes just deep enough. It seats on the rub in the bottom. Should give a fair amount of sealing, allowing most of the air to come out the front. Okay. So I hear you ask, um, so what are we going to attach this to? Am I ending up walking around with a, with a car tire? To, to dust? Um, the answer to that is obviously no. What I looked at is using a standard um, soft drink bottle um, of your choice. Um, guess which soft drink this is from. Anyway, these bottles are actually designed to sustain 120 psi of pressure when they are manufactured. Now, here's my little disclaimer. If in the process of making use of one of these or building your own and you blow some part of your anatomy off or you lose an eye or anything else happens to you, um, consider it payment of um, stupid tax. Um, searching a bit on the net, they suggest that it's quite safe to pump these to about 90 psi. Um, I would not recommend going anywhere above 60. Um, I normally use mine at about 50 psi and then also um, replace the bottles from time to time. I, um, if you keep inflating the same bottle over and over and over, you are going to end up into at a point where you've got the plastic fatigue um, and it may explode. And if these things blow, believe me, you could lose a finger or an eye and ear protection is also quite vital. So what you end up doing, take the top off, cut a nice round, 14, 13, 14 millimeter hole in that, poke your shredder valve through that and pull it through. So the idea here is that it should sit really, really tightly in this thing. And you'll see there's a little um, neck, there's a little um, part that's slightly thicker than the rest. Pull your valve through until that goes through and you've got the valve again. That should allow you to screw it back onto your bottle. Tighten that up nicely and you get a nice airtight seal. Um, putting your newly printed valve on the top. So we, there we have a, a little air duster. Um, might not be as good as a shopboard version, but um, it's refillable. So no CFCs. I don't think they really put CFCs in them anymore, but, but hey. <laughs> um, when you run out, you don't have to run back to the shop. You just run off and you get a new one. Let's pump this guy up and um, see what we can do. I use a, a stock standard Bicycle pump, um, your shredder valve, take your top off, slot it on, lock it in place, and pump away. I don't know if you can see the valve there. It's sitting at just under 60 psi, well, about 55 psi, just over three bar, depending on which scale you use. Um, simply pop it off. Nice and open. You can hear that. Pop your valve back on and dust your art's content. And when it's done, just pump it back up. Quick and easy. 
If you guys like this video, like this model, let me know, leave comments, um, give it a thumbs up on YouTube, and it helps a lot. Cheers guys, bye.